Awesome. Well, hey, we're going to jump into to part three of City Hope, and we're actually, we're talking about prayer today. And, uh, and actually what City Hope has, has been, you, you didn't even know this, but we just finished, we just came out of a series called You Asked For It. And so the topics that we've been talking about in, in summer at City Hope are topics that we couldn't even talk about and you ask for it. They were more topics like, like prayer, like family, like miracles. Those were things that you asked for. And so we've been talking about those over the last few weeks. And today is a topic of prayer that you were asking for when we did that survey at Easter time. And so we're going we're gonna to jump into that in just a moment. But, but, but before we do that, I want to introduce our our guest pastor today. His name is Andy Heiss, and I, I think you're going to love him. Uh, he's one of my mentors, one of my coaches, a, a spiritual brother and a father to me. He planted Desperation Church about nine years ago in Coleman, Alabama. We lived in the same city, uh, went to two different churches, and our boys played on the same baseball team. And this guy, I'm just telling you, so passionate for for North Alabama. They're getting ready to launch their fourth campus. Run, I don't even know how many how many services they have across their weekends, but God is doing some amazing things in him. And and it all, he would tell you, he's gonna tell you in just a minute, it all started with prayer. It all started with that being a focus. And so uh, Pastor Andy and Desperation have poured into us at City Hope. A lot of what we do is things that we learned from them or they coached us in. And so I want you to just give a City Hope welcome right now to Pastor Andy Heiss. What's up? How's it? City Hope good? Y'all good? Y'all good? Everybody good? Okay, four of you. It's all good. Y'all like, who's this, who's this redneck? I'm from Alabama, baby. So is he, but he's a lot cooler than I am. Hey, listen, uh, so glad to be in Texas with you guys, Wichita Falls. Listen, you guys have got something going on that is very uncommon. Uh, y'all been planning for six or seven months, and man, y'all are, y'all are already exploding, uh, just booming with people coming, and it is absolutely incredible what God is doing here. I coach several church pastors uh, or church, church planners on a regular basis, and what, what's happening here is unheard of, okay? And so you guys need to be excited about what God's doing here. Listen, come on, come on. And listen, I want to challenge you with everything that I am. Listen, you got an absolutely incredible pastor, all right? Pastor Ben and his wife, Annalise, are phenomenal, all right? Phenomenal people. And listen, if you will, trust me, just trust me on this. You got to hear me. If you will follow them, if you will honor them, if you will let them lead you, I promise you, number one, they're going to help you discover your purpose for your life inside the church and outside the church. And then, then this church right here is going to take Wichita Falls uh, for, for the kingdom of God in, in large, large ways. I promise you. It's going to be absolutely incredible. Uh, listen, um, Wichita Falls just came out of nowhere. I passed a bunch of cows, and then I came into Wichita Falls uh, from the airport. And it was really, really good. It was awesome. And listen, y'all got a beautiful city. Now, I said at the first service, and some dude over here is going, I'm like, apparently he don't like Wichita Falls very much. But I think y'all got a beautiful city, all right? And it's perfect. This church is perfect for the city. That's what I told him last night. I was like, man, this church is perfect for this city. And so, listen, I want to encourage you. Start inviting people. Get them to come. This place is going to explode. Y'all are going to be moving from this place, starting new services. Great things are going to happen. Listen, listen. If you're here today and you're looking for a church that's just us four no more, you know, our little holy huddle, I don't like to grow, I just like it the way it is, then this isn't the church for you, okay? I just ran people off from your church, I'm sorry. Listen, um, this, this church is going to grow, and if you want to be a part of a movement, listen, why would you want to be a part of something dead? Be a part of something that's moving. You only got one shot at life. Do something that's got the fire in it, like moving, like jump in the river of God, do your little canoper into the river of God, and let it take you where it wants to take you. God wants to do something with this church in large ways. There's something special about it, okay? So get on board and go, all right? So we're going to talk about prayer today. Y'all cool with that? We good? All right, I hope so. All right, and we're going to hopefully have a little fun, maybe cry a little bit, and we're going to laugh a little bit, hopefully uh, under, learn a little bit more than we knew before we got here, all right? Um, so um, listen, prayer, um, when, whenever I gave my life to Christ at the age of 24, uh, I got saved at a, at a club parking lot. Uh, believe it or not, God, Jesus goes to clubs. All right? I don't know if he dances or not, but I got saved. Basically, God started working in my life at Senior Frog. Y'all think I'm crazy? I'll tell you the story another time when he lets me come back. Okay, Senior Frog. That was back in a long time ago. Listen, but the big picture is Jesus changed my life radically. And, and, uh, and God, God did, did a work in my life. 
got, you know, when I got saved, he put mentors around me that taught me a lot about prayer. And, and they poured into me the importance of prayer. And so that's been an active part of my ministry. Every ministry I've been a part of, it's been the centerpiece. It's the buller room. They said prayer is the buller room of your personal life. Prayer is the buller room of who you are. And listen, I, I can't tell you enough, have conversation with God. We're going to talk a lot about that today, okay? Uh, and it's not one of these messages where we're going to make you feel like crap because you're not. I just said crap. I said it twice. I'm sorry. Listen, um, I'm not here today to make you feel bad, to beat you up because you're not praying enough because most people have already beat themselves up enough. All right? And we're not, we're not here to do that kind of stuff. I'm here to challenge you, to encourage you, to have conversation with God. That's my passion. That's my drive. That's my desire. And if you can leave here with more of a desire to talk to God, then I've done my job. All right? And so that's what I want to do because God wants to meet with you. I promise you, God wants to meet with you. And so we're going to talk about prayer today. Listen, not only is a prayer the bullet room of your life, prayer is the bullet room of this church. Whenever y'all get to the place of being able to have a, another service some way for a fashion, I'm hoping and praying that y'all have a prayer service. Not something you call a prayer service and you still have preaching. I'm talking about straight up prayer service, all right? Because prayer should be the bullet room of your church. It should be the centerpiece of everything you do. It should be your baby, and you should protect it because that's where God moves. God, listen, when God's people pray, especially when they're unified in prayer, the hand of God moves in large, large ways, and you'll start seeing things that a lot of people don't get to see, and it's fun, all right? So let's talk about prayer. Here we go, Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 4, talking about the parable. So the, so the, the, the disciples asked Jesus, Jesus, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. So this is what Jesus begins to teach them. It says, once Jesus was in a certain place praying, as he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. And so what we know as the Lord's Prayer is what Jesus tells them next. Okay, so why don't we do this? Let's do this, all right? It's going to, be, it's going to take, a, uh, you know, all of us together doing this. It's going to take a little courage for some of us. But why don't we say the Lord's Prayer together? Now, we're going to say it in the King James Version because that's what most of us probably know it in. And so let's say the Lord's Prayer. Y'all want to do that? Y'all cool with that? Okay, four of you. Let's go. Here we go. All right, y'all ready? I'll start us off, and then let's, look, look, I tried this in my church a while back, and it went over like a pregnant pole vaulter, all right? It didn't work very good, it didn't have much rhythm, and it was really bad, and it, everybody talked over each other, so I want y'all best to go with you, okay? So here we go, y'all ready? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And everybody said, amen. amen. Hey, give the person next to you a hand. Come on, pat them on the back. Good job. You did good. Woo! Come on. Listen. Y'all did so good. Y'all so much better than people in Coleman. Listen. So here's what Jesus is saying. Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. Give us each day the food we need and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. Now listen, here's what I need you to understand. Jesus wasn't telling his disciples, this is what you should pray. Now listen, by the way, you just quoted scripture. I think it's absolutely incredible. Now listen, if you want to say the Lord's Prayer every day because you feel like that's what you're supposed to do, then go for it. I don't think God's mad at you. But listen, he wasn't telling the disciples, this is how you should pray every single day. He wasn't saying, this is what you should pray. He said, this is how you should pray. Now, to be honest with you, we could take, we could take this, this, the Lord's Prayer, and we could just break it down every single week. And we could honestly do like a, like a, long, like a long series just with the Lord's Prayer on how to pray. Because he was teaching them how to pray in this moment. So he was saying, this is how you should pray. It, it, it was more, listen, it was more of a model than it was a mantra. So here are a few things I want you to see about Jesus and what, what he teaches us about prayer. The first thing I want you to see right off the bat is that prayer is conversation. Prayer is conversation. You know, I think it's really cool that Jesus started, uh, started, started the prayer off, the Lord's Prayer, with our Father. Our Father who art in heaven. Listen, we hear the, that our Father, uh, we, we hear that today on a regular basis. It's simple. It's because we, we've, we've sung about it. We've prayed that. Our Father, we've heard about it. We've heard people preach about God being our Father. It's a normal part of our life. But it wasn't a part of the life of, of Jews back in the day, back in Jesus' day. 
So to the disciples, when they hear him say, our father, to the disciples, this was brand new stuff. This was brand new. It was life changing. They had never called God father. They'd never heard him called father. They didn't know that they could call God father. So basically, Jesus was saying, hey, we got a relationship. Let me, let me throw this out there to you. Did you know? Did you know that Jesus died for the purpose of conversation with him so that you could have conversation with him? Now, listen, the Old Testament saints had conversation with God, but it's completely different than what we have conversation with God. We enter into the presence of God. There's something about prayer that draws in the presence of God. But listen, here's the big picture. The presence of God was in the temple in a certain place. And nobody but the priest could go back there, and the priest better have his life right, too, before he went back into the presence of God. But, but listen, when Jesus died, took his last, last breath, the Bible says that the veil was torn, that now we can enter into the presence of God and call God a friend. Romans chapter 5, verse 10. We can have friendship with God. We can enter into God's presence anytime we want to. All right, why? Because of what Jesus did. So Jesus died on the cross so that we could have conversation. Now listen, let me. some of you are like, well, hold on now, brother. I thought Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Yes, 100%, but it was our sins that was keeping us from having conversation with God the way God wanted us to. So when Jesus, listen, covered our sins, it, it brought in communication and relationship. Jesus became, in Romans chapter 5, it tells him being a mediator, the mediator between us and God. He was the middle man. And so now we can approach God with boldness, with confidence, with our chest stuck out, and with our head high and say, I know him because he's my father and I'm his child. All right? So we can have conversation with God now. now let me ask you a question. Do you, do you ever take that for granted? This, it's so easy to take for granted that Jesus died, shed his blood, so that we can have communication with the Father. It, it, to me, it, it blows my mind that God would do something like that for us. Listen, Jesus died to bring us into a different kind of relationship than anyone had ever had with God. You know, there was, there was no passage in the Old Testament where God, where God was called Father. As a matter of fact, they wouldn't even, whenever they were writing the name of God down, they wouldn't even put all the letters in it because God's name was so holy. So when you read about all the heroes in the Old Testament, all our heroes we read about in the Old Testament never were able to talk to God the way we get to, the way we do. Did you know that? Did you know that Moses never called God Father? Did you know Noah never called God Father? David never called God Father. Daniel never called God Father. But because of Jesus, we do. We have the, we have the opportunity, the blessing. Man, it's so easy to take it for granted. You know, it's crazy how many of us got this thought process that, that you know, we got to pray a certain way. We got 19 steps of how to pray. And if you don't pray this way, it's not a good prayer. Like God's sitting up in heaven with a scale of 1 to 10. Like, bless God. Okay, there's Brother Andy right there. Let me see. Right, I'm hearing your prayer. I'll give you a 3 on that. That's about a 3 right there. We got to get that up a little bit. You got to get your prayers just in there just a little bit better. You know, it's amazing how many of us have this scale thought process of how God scales our prayer. When in reality, all God wants to do is have conversation with his children. All he wants to do, it, listen, it brings him joy. He his son died so that you could talk to him. It brings joy to him that you could just crawl up in his lap as his child and have conversation with him. That's what he wants. That's awesome. He just wants conversation. I'm sweating like a mule up here. Yonks, yonks. I'm sorry. I'm just ADD moment. Listen, I'm hot. Listen, we don't pray. I had to wake y'all up. We don't pray so that God will love us more. We don't pray because God will punish us if we don't. Listen, it, I, I don't know if Texas is anything like Alabama, but Alabama is the, the belt buckle of the Bible belt, all right? We're the prong of the belt buckle in Coleman, Alabama. I mean, like, the religion is just staunch. It is nasty. It is mean. It's some of the meanest people outside of middle school students, church people, some of the meanest people I've ever met in my life. You know what I'm talking about? Like, mean. I mean, God ain't never called us. They, they, they ain't nothing mean about the, 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 the gifts of the Spirit, right? The fruit of the Spirit. But, man, we sure can be. But the big picture is, I don't know if it's like, I, thought, I still think y'all part of the Bible Belt a little bit, all right? I'm going to say, Texas part of the Bible Belt? I mean, I know y'all trying to move out, but it's all good. All right, we're going to keep you in as long as we can. I'm just kidding. Uh, listen, the big picture is it's amazing how many of us can get caught up with praying by thinking that if I pray this long or this much, then God's going to approve of me. When in reality, God already approves of you because of the blood of Jesus Christ that covers you. All right? It's not about how much you pray or how much you don't pray. It's about how much the blood of Jesus Christ covers you, which is all of Christ. 
And the big picture is, is because of what Jesus did for me, it's not that I have to pray. It's that I get to pray and I want to go and have a conversation with God. That, that, that's what it's all about. And so, you know, it, it's not about like if I don't pray, then God's going to make bad things happen to me, which is amazing. Even in this room right here, there are people that don't want to think that way, but you know you think that way. Because whenever I say it, it sounds really bad, but we probably think that way more than we realize. That if I don't do this, God's going to be upset with me. Can I ask you a question? Isn't the gospel, the gospel called good news? Is that good news? That's not good news. There's nothing about that. That's bad news that if I don't pray enough or if I, don't, if, or if I come with you know, a bad prayer, then, then God's going to punish me. It's amazing the mindsets that we carry. If you think about it like this, for those that have children in your life. Listen, would, would you hate it? Like, a lot of us serve God out of fear, not out of his love for us. Would you, would you hate it if your child came to you and had conversation with you just because they were scared to death of you. That's why they had conversation with you. Because they were scared you was going to punish them if you didn't have conversation with them. Would you like that? No, ain't nobody in this room would like that. So you're, you, we, we are sinful moms and dads. We got, we, got, we got the curse of sin that hangs off our bones. So listen, think about us, how much we love our children and love to have conversation with our kids most of the time. Listen. We love to have conversation with our kids. Think about how much more a perfect, loving, heavenly father wants to have conversation with you. Think about it. He wants to be with you. He wants to, all he wants is conversation. And it doesn't look like 19 steps in how to pray. It's just conversation. It don't matter if you're in your shower. It don't matter if, you, if you're in your car, drinking your coffee, on the toilet. I don't care. Just have conversation with God. He don't care. He's just glad you're coming to him. He died for it. Jesus died. So we have a relationship. Do you know, I really believe that, that on the other side of the conversations with God, on the other side of prayer, is your calling, is your purpose, your, your destiny, however you want to say it. You know, I don't know if anybody in this room could really discover what God's called them to if you're not really, if you're not really having conversation with God. Because, listen, now here's the deal. Now, now am, am I talking about the big picture? Like, man, what's my big calling? What's my big purpose in life? Why am I created? Because here's the big picture. Here's what I need you to understand. God didn't, li listen, he didn't create you just to take up space on this earth. He created you with a purpose and for a reason. He did not waste his time making you. You are here for a reason. Now, you may feel like you're just here just taking up space, but I promise you, God created you for a reason. That main reason was to glorify him, okay? So when it comes to a calling, you may have something that God wants you to do, like a calling. But we got a calling and a purpose every single day of life. Every single day of life, you got a calling, all right? And the way that you walk in what God's called you to, and we'll talk a little bit more about those in just a minute, is being sensitive to Him. Walk with Him, which leads me to my next point, and we'll talk more about, more about that. So point number two is prayer is continual. It's not a one-time deal. Prayer is continual. The Bible says to pray continually. Now, what does that look like? Does that mean I'm constantly praying I can't have conversations with other people and I can't talk to my kids because I'm constantly talking to God? Now, what does that mean? Well, here's what I think it means. He said, Jesus' prayer says, give us each day the food we need. Give us each day the food we need. Now, listen, prayer is continual conversation with God. You know, I think a lot of us, all of us, probably most of us, need to change the way we look at prayer a lot of times. Listen, it's not a one-time event that takes place early in the morning. You know, a lot of us have our quiet times, and, you know, by the way, nothing wrong with going behind the, the secret, going to the secret place, but going behind closed doors and having a conversation with God if you do that. But, listen, um, there's a place where that, that, that's, that's not what the Bible's talking about. There's nothing wrong with that. That's great. But here's the big picture. The reason why we go in and have conversation with God is so that our spirit will be sensitive with God as we walk throughout the day. You know, Walking continually in prayer means this, is that we're walking in the Spirit, that in our conscience, that we're constantly having communication with God. If you're a believer and you've been walking with Him for a long time, you know what I'm talking about. There are times that you're walking with God and because your Spirit is sensitive to Him and you want to obey Him because you love Him, you're passionate about Him, you're driven by your passion for God. Whenever you get to this place over here, I'm about to get into a gossip session. The Holy Spirit begins to get in your spirit and say, hey, it's not time to tear somebody down and lift yourself up. You need to be careful with this session right here. You need to walk away from it as much as you can. Get away. 
and the Holy Spirit, because you're continually walking with God. God's always on the forefront of your mind and on the forefront of your heart, on the forefront of your conscience. Why? Because Jesus is my life. He is everything. And because of that, I'm constantly, listen, I'm having conversations with other people, but God is always speaking, even while I'm talking to other people, and he is helping me communicate what he wants to communicate. We're just, we're just doing, you know, walking through the day. Continually, listen, how are you going to know what God wants for you to do every single day? You don't need to waste a day. Your, your life is short. One little life on this earth is short. So don't waste a day. Let God walk with you and use you throughout the day. Like, listen, whether that be it, that, like at Walmart, which by God, that, that, that Walmart is straight from the devil. But the big picture is, is that God use you there. People need Jesus there. They're there right now. Let's go get them. Listen, the pork and beans out, God going to tell you, like, hey, this person needs prayer. Pray for them. Listen, there's a place where, there's a place where uh, you know, God's going to tell you, hey, I know you only got $20 to your name, but there's somebody over here who needs it more than you do. You need to give it away. But you'll never know that if you don't know the voice of God. If you're not walking with it, if you're not, if you're not continue, listen, prayer is not something you're going to get overnight. It's a long process. And listen, I don't care if you do it behind, most people think the only way they can do it is behind closed doors. And when they don't do it behind closed doors, they walk in guilt. What I would say is get in your car, turn some worship music on and talk to Jesus. I don't care. Just keep your hands on the steering wheel, quit worshiping without your hands on the wheel. Listen, not as you got a Tesla. All right, listen. It's continual conversation with God. It's always, it's always there. You know, God, God wants to do something, and you've like, you got to walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit means continually con uh, having communication with God. The next thing is prayer is combat. Prayer is combat. Did you know that as we sit right here in this physical realm, I, I hope I don't freak a lot of people out. I don't mean to freak you out. I think that most of us would kind of agree with this, but I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. But as we sit here in the physical realm, did you know there's another realm around us that's, that's just as wide open and as active as this realm is right here? It's called the spiritual realm. And, and there, there are demons and angels that war for you. All right, there's a spiritual battle going on all around us. All of heaven and all of hell is at war for you and at war for this church. And listen, uh, you know, Billy Graham says it's like a big white dog and a big black dog inside of you fighting. He said, whichever one you feed the most wins. And the big picture is this is that when we walk in the Spirit and we pray, I don't understand it completely, but God uses prayer. God uses prayer for combat. He, he uses it to go to war. I think a lot of us got to do it because it makes us sensitive to his voice, and he can help guide us away from traps and areas that the enemy wants to just attack us in. Listen, there's a spiritual realm, you know, all of heaven and all of hell is at war for this church. He's going to do everything he can to destroy this church, to split this church, to war against this church. That's why you need prayer warriors in this church. I had a prayer team pray for me before the service started today. And, man, them jokers get after it. Now, y'all got some prayer warriors in the house. I had some dude lay hands on my back. Felt like lava hands, like lava hands. On. Like, whoa, that's hot. He got some fire coming through him. Like, man, what you got on you? You got some icy hot? Listen, it was burning me. But it was good, though. People in the, like, Baptist people in the house like, what is he talking about? I'm kind of, I'm bad because it's all good. I know where you're from. Listen, big picture is this. It's prayer, it's combat. You got a war going on around you. Listen, what does the Bible say? It says put on the armor of God in Ephesians chapter 6. It tells you all the armor of God to put on. And then what does it say at the very end of it? And stand firm and what? Pray. Stay firm, stand firm and pray. Listen, I, prayer is a mystery in so many different ways. But, but here's the big picture. Prayer uh, moves the hand of God. God can't help but move his hand. There's something between us, humanity, creation, and God that when we pray, it works together. And it's a mystery. I, I can't completely understand, uh, understand it and explain it. But I just know that when we do it, God has to move. Now listen, why do you put on the armor of God? Why do you have to put on armor? Which, by the way, every piece of the armor of God is Jesus. Just want to throw that out there. You can go out and look at all of them. Why do you put on the armor of God? You don't put on the armor of God to go to Brahms to get an ice cream cone. I'll give me a double scoop with your, with your armor on. You don't put on the armor of God you know, to go tiptoe around the rose bushes. You, know, you put the armor of God on to, to go to war. 
You go to war, you go to the front lines of the battlefield, you get bloody for the sake of Jesus, you're afraid. We together as the body of Christ are a faceless army doing everything we can to make the name of Jesus known. And so we go get bloody for the sake of Christ. We go to war. Why? Because there's people out here that's not here yet, that's outside these four walls, that's driving up down the highways and the byways and the Walmarts and all the stores that, that don't go to church anywhere. We go to war for them. We're going to stand in the gap for them. We're going to fight for them. We're going to bring them in, get to know Jesus and experience abundant life of what their life was meant for. That's why we're here today. Come on. So, come on. Listen, I'm sweating more. I got to move on. Listen, so prayer is combat. Listen, you'll be sensitive whenever you pray to the Holy Spirit when the enemy's attacking. Have any of y'all ever had that gut feeling? Like, hmm, something not right, something wrong. And, and you walk away, and later on it was revealed like, oh, I, whoa, glory, thank you, Jesus. I just do it the whole time. I mean, like, my gut was telling me, like, it, it was the Holy Spirit telling you to move because you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Listen, when you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, he can protect you from a lot of stuff. There's people in this room that God wants to set you free from unforgiveness, that you're holding bitterness towards somebody. And if you, listen, the only way you're going to get set free from that is letting the Holy Spirit deal with you and help you get set free from it. There, I mean, we can go across the board. People in here has got depression like crazy. God wants to set you free from that thing. And you have conversations with God, it will help the process. There's a lot we could talk about. So let's move into the next part of the, of the text real quick, all right? So he goes into and he begins to give them a parable, which I'm hoping this helps some. I hope, I hope this like, gives some people some inspiration in the house. It says Luke, Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 13, it says, Then, teaching them more about prayer, and it also Jesus teaching them about prayer, he used this story. He says, Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight, wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. Now, listen, if somebody comes to my house at midnight and asks for like, some wonder bread, I, I'm, I, I got my gun out. All right, just don't, don't do that. Um, you say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit, and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom, don't bother me. The door is locked for the night, and my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you. But I tell you this, though he won't do it for a friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he'll get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence and so I tell you keep on asking in other words you're not bothering God keep on asking and you'll receive what you ask for keep on seeking and you will find keep on knocking and the door will be open to you for everyone who asks receives everyone who seeks finds and to everyone who knocks the door will be open which leads me to my next and last point is prayer is perseverance Prayer is perseverance. Man, perseverance is something that, that will make, uh, make your faith strong if you'll stay in the battle, if you'll just continue to move, continue to fight, continue to get strength from God to continue to, to move. Now, listen, if you ain't heard anything else I've said, that th this is the message in a nutshell. I need you to grab this. I, I need you to hold on to this. Here's what I need you to understand, especially from this parable that Jesus just told. Great faith. It's not praying once and getting what you ask for. Great faith is praying, not seeing any results, but you continue to pray. Great faith is not praying once and getting what you ask for, which, by the way, that happens sometimes, but most of the time it does not. Great faith is praying, not seeing any results, and keeping on praying. You know, when, when I read this passage before, I've only heard this passage read and taught as, bless God if you ask and if you seek and if you knock. Whatever you ask for, bless God, you're going to get it, all right? Well, when I started studying this, I started looking at it a little different. And honestly, it's increased my faith. It's helped me see a little bit more about who God is. There's more to the story. Listen, it says, keep on seeking. Keep on seeking means you didn't find it right away, so you keep on looking. Keep on seeking, keep on knocking, keep on asking, keep on. Keep on means you didn't find it right away, so you keep looking. How many of you in, in here like, have lost stuff in your house and you can't find it and you kind of give up on it? Or, or maybe, maybe, you, maybe you keep looking for it. Now listen, me and my, my son, he's 13 years old. He's a lot like me. We're, we're both a little ADHD. You know, we think about squirrels one second and okra the next. And so, um, and so, me and him are always losing stuff. Now, my wife is OCD. Like, she's got a place 
for everything. Like she will, she, this is the honest truth. She'll walk, she'll walk through the house, like touching stuff and just moving it perfect like this, constantly. Like, like the TV remote. Like, does anybody else have anybody like that in your family? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Oh, look, like, oh, this ain't right. We got to fix this. Like, for hours, hours upon, like, this ain't right. Like, you're sick. You need help. I, we love each other so much I can tell her that. So listen, so, so basically, you know, we lose stuff all the time. And so I'll, I'll, you know, I'll have it laid out somewhere where I want it. And I'll go back to where it was at where I laid it because I know where it's at. And it's not there no more. And me and Kayla both have to do this. So I have to call her, my wife, immediately or ask her, like, hey, where's my hat? Well, your hat's on the hat rack where it's supposed to go. <laughs> no, it's supposed to be on that table because I'm going to wear it later on. I put it there for a reason. No, it's supposed to go on the hat rack. Hey, where's my shoes? It's on the shoe rack where it's supposed to go. Nice and tidy. No, I'll put it right here so I don't forget them. Well, if you leave them there, I'm going to trip over them. They're on, they're on the shoe rack. Anybody else, anybody else know what I'm talking about? No, okay. Hey. I got you back here. I'm with you. It's tight. But our house is tidy. It looks nice. It looks good. Just crazy people keep it up. Listen, I'm just kidding. I love my wife. She's awesome. Listen, so she would laugh too with me. So here's the big picture. Is Listen, that's the thing about God. You keep on asking. He's, he knows what you're looking for, and he's going he's gonna to help direct you to what, what he, he's helping you find. All right? It may not be in your timing. It may not be the results that you're looking for, but on the other end, you'll see that it was better for you in the long run because there is another side to it. There's more to the story. Keep on knocking. This is what it says. Keep on asking means you didn't ask once. You kept on asking. It says this in the Passion Translation. It says, in one day, the door will be opened. One day, the door will be opened. I wonder how many people are not, have been knocking forever, and you feel like the door is not ever open. I, I feel like there's a great possibility, even though you're not seeing the results from people in this room that's knocking on the door of what you, you need in your life that God is already having the results take place, and you're not seeing it. Why? Because God, more than anything else, is wanting to build your faith. You know, I wonder how many in this room have been knocking on a door, and you're still praying one day it's going to open. It, it, maybe it's a prodigal. Uh, may, maybe, maybe, maybe it's a job. Maybe it's a healing. May, maybe, it's, maybe it's a temptation that you struggle with on a regular basis. Uh, maybe you're in bondage to something. Uh, maybe it's addiction, something you're addicted to. This, it might not be drugs. It might be pork chops. I don't know, but you're addicted to it. It's controlling your life. It might be Fox News or CNN. That's an addiction. Huh? Listen, I'm glad. Thank you. I'm taking her back home with me, by the way. She's going to call me with me. I like her a lot. She fires me up. I need somebody preaching back to me. Listen, it might be bondage. I, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but the thing about it is, is you've been knocking, asking God to help, and he is. You know, this is what the Bible says. One day, it will open for you. One day is a big phrase. One day takes you on a journey. One day does something to your soul. It's, listen, the one day, the, the whole one day and the keep on, listen, if God gave you everything immediately, we'd all be spoiled brats and we wouldn't have a reason to seek him. Whenever, whenever we keep on knocking and keep on asking, it means we're continuing to seek God, that God, you're my only hope, you're my only help. And God, I want to learn how to trust you and place my faith in you. Here's the deal. Here's what God wants to do in y'all's lives more than anything else and in my life more than anything else. Because faith is the centerpiece of Christianity. God wants to build your faith. And I would step out and say, if any of you are like me, I'm a preacher. I've been to nine years of, of Bible college and seminary. The big picture is this, though. I still struggle with trusting God. Now, isn't it funny how as little bitty tights, as little babies, even in diapers, you know, we're, we're learning Bible lessons and Sunday school lessons for those who have been in church the whole life, uh, and songs about trusting Jesus. You know, we sang songs growing up like, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. Well, that's great and everything, but the thing about it is most of us struggle with it. The reason why a lot of us probably aren't as happy as we'd like to be is probably because we're not putting our trust in the one that's greater than we are. That, want, that wants, wants you to trust him in every area of your life. That's what God desires. That's what God wants. He loves you. He desires to be a part of your life. And what he's doing is, is he's got, he, it's called sanctification. He's building your faith. He, he's building your walk. He's strengthening your spirit. Putting, putting to death you, your flesh, and making your spirit strong so that you can be who he's called you to be. 
and help other people walk in this life and discover the beauty of abundant life, Jesus. There's so much to it. So, one day it does something to your soul. It, it, listen, it, can either, it can either train your hand for battle or it can crush your spirit. It can crush you. You know, there's people in this room that's quit praying. People in this room whose spirits are crushed. You might, you might have came today just because, like, man, I have no hope. There's a new church that started out here called City Hope. I, I like that name called Hope. I'm going to just give it a shot just see if there's some way, form, or fashion that I can find some hope today. Well, guess what? You came to the right place. Because, number one, this is an incredible church. Well, actually, no, that's number two. Number one would be Jesus' hope. And number two, this, this church chases after Jesus. And so Jesus is your hope, so you came to the right place. But there's people that spirit are crushed. This is what Proverbs 13, 12 says. It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. Some of you are dreaming, knocking on a door. You can't quit. Perseverance makes your spirit strong. Brian Johnson wrote a book called When God Becomes Real, and this is one of the things that he says in it. He says, when God heals someone of something instantaneously, a lot of times it's the Lord marking you as his child and showing you how much he loves you. But other times he heals you over time. Your freedom is a fight. The answer to prayer is a journey. But through that process, it's a process, it's a journey. But through that process, he's training your hand for battle. And when he trains your hand for battle, he gives you a special anointing to help other people walk through the same journey. That process strengthens your spirit in a way that an instant healing never could. Listen, God's training you for battle. to Go to the front lines. Listen, the journey of one day or praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and praying, but still not seeing the other side can strengthen you, but it can also crush you. See, there's people in this room that has prayed like this before, and you've prayed and prayed and prayed, and then honestly, you got to the other side of your prayers, and now, now you're here, and you're looking back, and you never saw it in the present of what God was doing, but now that you're in the future, you're looking back to the past. Y'all got all this? I sound like a word problem in math. You're looking back to the past, and you're seeing the fingerprints of God all over your prayers, and you never knew it was happening, and it increased your faith to where now your faith is so strong that there's somebody else, a brother or a sister, or maybe even somebody that's lost that don't know Jesus that's going through the exact same thing, and now because you walk through it, you can come up beside them and be a little extra strength for them, all right? You can be their strength, and you can walk with them through the process. Why? Because I've been there, done that, experienced that, and now I know what you're dealing with. So here I am, ha 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 ha, helping you. All right? Oh, scared the baby. Okay, I'm sorry. The Joker came alive. Listen. Oh God, I feel terrible. Okay, let me move forward. So, the journey of one day, you can strengthen somebody else. So, what's the difference? The difference is, is when your your heart becomes sick. It because you start believing lies. I wonder how many people are walking in lies right now. The enemy's such a liar. He always lies about the character of God and who God is. He always makes God out to be a villain more than he is somebody that's a, a savior, he, a hero. Listen, a lot of people believe lies like, you know, any other person would have already gotten what they asked for. Or maybe it's a lie. God isn't giving me, giving me what I asked for because I don't have enough faith. Can I kind of throw this out there to you? If you're here and you're still asking for what you've been asking for for a long time, then you got enough faith. You just keep on going. Keep on trucking. Keep on moving. Keep on asking. Keep on knocking. Listen, God, God isn't moving. A lot of people lie. It's another lie. God isn't moving because, because he doesn't love me. He's not on my side. He's against me. Now, I know that some of y'all are like, man, that's just crazy. I mean, like, you know. Listen, it's amazing how many people believe this. That God is not for them. That he is against them. Such a lie of the devil. Listen, there are people in this room right here that's been in church your whole life, and you still feel like God's against you because you're not doing enough. And you cannot do enough. That's why Jesus came. That's a works-based theology. Jesus came for the purpose of being enough. Not so that you can do enough or not do enough. Jesus is enough, and his blood covers you. And because of Jesus, that gives me more of a desire to pursue the Father. That's a big, that's a big deal. That's a gigantic deal. A lot of people are thinking, like, I, I must have done something to make God mad at me. Man, that's, a, that's not good news. 
Listen, you do stuff every day that could make God mad at you, but because of Jesus, because of Jesus, because of the blood of Jesus, He's not mad at you. He loves you. He knew you was going to do that before you did it. Now, this is, that don't mean to go out and just do bad stuff because he already knows I'm going to do it. That's stupid. I, if you're thinking, oh, he's just preaching a grace-based message. Well, yeah, I am, but the big picture is, is a lot of people use grace as a license to sin, but whenever you really walk in grace, you begin to understand the beauty of who Jesus is, and it causes you not to want to sin. You want to run from it. And so I would say discover who God is. God loves you. He's passionate about you. He hungers for you to be a part of your life. That's why Jesus died. It's amazing how much self-doubt and self-blame grows out of doubting God. It's dangerous. It's dangerous lies. So that's why the next part of the parable looks like it's way out in left field. Like Jesus starts talking about out of the blue. Like he's talking about bread and knocking on doors and somebody hollering back at him. Now he's starting to talk about fish and snakes and scorpions. Like, holy cow, Jesus, you got some severe ADHD. Like, what is going on? Like, you're here. Now, why, why are you bringing in fish, snakes, and scorpions? Holy cow. But it only looks like that because Jesus is so far ahead of us. See, I don't think a lot of times we understand how far Jesus is ahead of us and already making things happen. He starts giving us the answer before we even know the problem. It's like Jeopardy. You have the answer. You just don't know what the question is yet. Mm -hmm. Listen, the question is, if I praise, what a lot of people ask. If I pray and ask God for something over and over and over and don't get it, does that mean God doesn't love me? Well, listen, I'm going to read to you um, what the Bible says. This is the, the Passion Translation. I can read to you out of the New Living Translation. It's a little bit different, but it has the, the same focus. It says, do you know of any father who would give his son a snake? This is the, the rest of the parable. Do you know of any father who would give his son a snake on a plate? Which, by the way, if anybody brings a snake on a plate to me, I'm probably going to give you the right hand of fellowship and run. All right? <laughs> so anyway, when he asked for a servant of fish, of course not. Do you know of any father who would give his daughter a spider when she, asked, when she had asked for an egg? Of course not. If imperfect parents know how to lovingly take care of their children and give them what they need, how much more would the perfect heavenly father give the Holy Spirit's fullness when his children ask him. So if you're asking, does God still love me? The answer is yes. He still loves you. God loves you so much more than any person ever could or ever will. Whatever, listen, whatever love you've experienced here on this earth, that is nothing compared to how much he loves you at all. Maybe you felt like you're knocking and God's just angry with you. Listen, here's what I need you to understand. God isn't an angry neighbor.
now we are called the blood of Christ, friends of God. Ephesians calls us children of God. Now we can crawl up into the lap of God and have a conversation. Tell him all our needs. He wants to hear them. He loves to hear them. Tell him all our battles. Tell him all the things we struggle with. He likes to hear it. There's a lot of people in this room that's been knocking for a long time and you're really frustrated. Let me give you a confessions of a pastor, all right? Um, so when I got saved at 24, um, I started praying for my grandfather, my grandpa, all right? Uh, he, he was from Louisiana, all right? He's from Louisiana. I was born in Louisiana, but was raised in Alabama, okay? Uh, I have people tell me I sound like a Cajun all the time, and I was like, no, nah, it's just redneck, all right? But the big picture is, is that um, I remember my grandfather, uh, you know, he was ornery. He, he wasn't a very nice guy. Like that. He loved us. I knew he loved us. But, you know, he died at the age of 91 uh, on Christmas. Um, but my grandfather, my grandmother died before he did. And I remember about a year after she passed away, you know, I'd been praying for him forever to get saved. Which, by the way, side note, there was a place where I was praying every single day and I wasn't seeing anything. And I, there was a place where it kind of phased out. It wasn't like I just like, well, I'm just done with this guy. I'm throwing my hands up. I'm through praying. It wasn't nothing like that. Just kind of phased out. I got tired of praying about it. And, and I just, I quit. But I prayed for years upon years every single day if my grandfather gives his life to Christ. But thank God my sister keeps praying. She's a lot more spiritual than I am. She was praying that grandpa would give his life to Christ. And so he calls me up when he's about 89 years old. And he starts asking me, like, hey, how do, how do you talk to Jesus? Like, how, do, how, do I, how do I get things right with, with God? Because he knew he'd get up in age. I said, Grandpa, just, just talk to him. He's not out there judging your prayer. He just wants conversation. He says, well, I feel like me and him need to get some things right. I'm like, well, he's waiting on you. All you got to do is have a conversation. So he said, all right. That was it. He hung up the phone. About a week later, he called me up. He said, I, Andy? I said, yes, sir. He said, I did it. I said, what'd you do, Grandpa? He said, me and, me and God talked. He said, you know, he goes out, he said, I go out in the pasture every single, every single day and I talk to the cows. I'm like, Grandpa, don't tell too many people that. You're, that's just kind of weird. He said, I go, out in the, I go out in the pasture and I talk to, he got a lot of land, a lot of cows and stuff. And I go out there and I talk to the cows. And he said, this time I talked to God. And he said, I got things right with him. I said, Grandpa, that's awesome, man. That's the greatest thing you'll ever do in your entire life. And he gave his life to Christ at 89 years old, died at 91. His life was changed after that. I think it's a lot of fun, but I'm really frustrated at myself. There was a place where I kind of quit praying. But I'm a, God still loved him and saved him. Thank you, Jesus. But there's a great possibility there are people in this room right here that's been knocking and praying for a long time. You've been knocking and praying. Knocking, 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 knocking. So here's what I want to do. I want to do something just a little bit different, okay? A little bit different. If you're a guest here, I hope this don't freak you out. All right? This probably is something they do on a regular basis. Um, I'm going back to Columbus, so y'all going to be mad at me later on. So here, here's, here's what I want us to do. So if you're here today and you're saying, um, how, many, how many would say, Andy, I've been knocking for a long time in prayer, asking for God for something, and I just, I'm not sure if I'm seeing it or not. Throw your hands up just real quick. If that's you, here's what I'm going to ask you to do, okay? Here's what we're going to do. All right? Nothing freaky is going to happen, nothing crazy. And listen, if you're a guest, you don't have to participate. All right? We just... We're so thankful that you're here. But if that's you, it's going to take some courage. I, I just want to, we, I want to pray for you, okay? And I want the church to pray. I want us to be the body. Can we just, if that's you, will you just stand up? Just stand up. I'm not going to ask you to come from, just stand up where you're at. Now look here. Now here, look around, church, all right? And if you're a guest, once again, you do not have to participate. Look around, church, okay? Everybody sitting down. Listen, if you feel comfortable enough, would you find somebody that's standing up around you? And let's be the body of Christ. And let's go stand in the gap with them and let's pray over them. So why don't we do this? Once you stand up and listen, you can go lay hands on somebody or you can just reach your hands out. I right? just reach your hands out and pray over them, okay? You just, you just do whatever. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, you just stay where you're at. Not a big deal. No, no pressure. No pressure. Just pray. Just pray. Father, in Jesus' name, God, I pray for, for a, 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 that, God, you would answer prayers. It may not be the way we want to be answered. It may not be the results that we're looking for. It might not be the timing we're looking for, but God, I pray that some way, form, or fashion, you would reveal to the people in this room that, God, you're an on-time God, and that, God, you're speaking, that, God, you are there. You're moving with them. They may not see it, 
But God, some way, form, or fashion, reveal to them that they're moving. Maybe it was by this message. I don't know. But God, you are with them, you are near them, and that you love them. God, there, there are people in this room, couples in this room that are trying to have babies. Lord, I ask in Jesus' name that you'd fill their womb. In Jesus' name, God, they're so tired of knocking on the door. God, fill their womb. God, there are people in this room asking for prodigals to come home. Bring those babies home. God, it's time for them to come home and meet Jesus and start walking the life you created them for. God, there are people in this room who struggle with addiction. Addiction could be anything. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you'd set them free, that you'd move on. There's people who struggle with temptation. There's people who struggle with unforgiveness. There's people who struggle with, with, uh, with gossip. God, there's people that struggle with temptation, bondage. I, I don't know. God, in Jesus' name, Father, give them the power to walk away because, God, you're walking with them. God, set them free. God, we're going to trust you. We're going to walk with you, and we're going to give this time to you, Father, in your name. And everybody said, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, come on. Hey, listen, you can be seated real quick. Hey, listen, why don't we bow our heads? Why don't we close our eyes? Hey, if you're here today and you say, Andy, I'll be honest with you, man. I don't really have a relationship with God. I'm far from God. I don't have a relationship with him. I don't really understand what you're talking about when you say crawl up in his lap because I don't know him. And man, I want to know him today. I, I, I want a relationship. I want to start a relationship with God today. I'm far from him. I want to draw close. Listen, God's not distanced himself from you. You've just basically distanced yourself from God. God's always been where he's going to be. But he wants you to come home. So why don't you come home today? If you want a relationship with God, here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to ask you to come to the front. But if you want a relationship with God, here's what I'm going to do. Just so I know I've got somebody here to introduce to Jesus. It will be an honor to introduce you to Jesus, okay? If you're here today and, and you want to start a relationship with God, here's all I'm going to do. I'm going to count to three just so I know I've got somebody else. All I want to do is put your hand up, put it right back down. That will give me a heads up that somebody's here who wants a relationship with God so I can tell you how to do that, okay? So here's, here we go. You ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Go. Throw your hands up. Where you at? I see, I see a couple. I see some. Come on. Listen, here's what the Bible says about a relationship with God. The Bible says in Romans, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, it says, Confess Jesus as Lord with your mouth, to believe in your heart that is raised again on the third day. And the Bible says that you will be saved. It says you'll, you'll, you'll start a relationship. So, so you say, Andy, how do I start a relationship with God? I think every relationship starts with conversation some way, form, or fashion. That's why I think it says confess with your mouth, with your tongue, talk to God, confess Jesus as Lord of, my, of your life. In other words, Lord, I'm tired of running my life. I've been Lord of my life way too long. I need you to take control of my life. You have my life and do with me what you will. So confess Jesus as Lord of your mouth. Believe in your heart that he died on the cross for your sins because he loves you. He's passionate about you. He took the wrath of God that we deserve. It's called propitiation. It's used twice in the Bible. And then he believed that he didn't stay in the ground for three days. That he rose from the grave. And that today, July, uh, what was that, July, June the 30th, 2019, Jesus Christ is alive and he is well today with your best interest. That's why he brought you to church today. Because he wants you to meet him. So why don't we have conversation with God? Why don't we start? First time for some of you. First time ever. Why don't we start a conversation with God? Listen, you can repeat after me. I'll help you with it. Or you can just talk to him. It's not 19 steps how to get to God. It's not about a perfect prayer. It's about just talking to him. He's ecstatic that you're talking to him. He don't care. So repeat after me if you want to. Say, Jesus, I confess you as Lord. I turn from my sin. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. I believe you paid the penalty of my sin. You took the wrath of God that I deserve. I believe that you were buried for three days. But Jesus, thank you so much that you didn't die there. Thank you, Jesus, that you rose from the grave. And that today, Jesus, I get to start a relationship with you. And you are rescuing me from me. You are rescuing me from my sin. You are rescuing me, God. And I love you. And I thank you. And I give you my life. I pull up my white flag. And I'm done with me. I'm surrendering to you. Jesus, take my life and do with it what you will. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Listen, if you're here today and you just said that, you just prayed to, to receive Christ, can we celebrate with them, City Hope Church? Come on, let's celebrate with them. We fired up for you. Greatest decision you'll ever make in your entire life.